Hello YouTube and welcome to my channel Jade Rhapsody and thanks for tuning in for another episode of jewelry tutorials. Today I will be showing you how to string uh, a necklace using your 19 strand nylon coated wire and this is good for flexibility so you get a lot of movement and it's also very strong so it's 19 strands that are woven together and then coated with nylon. I'm going to be using the turquoise beads for the main part of my necklace, so like the sides, and then the center piece I'm going to be using the seven beads here, and I also need a lobster class with the end tag, and two crimp beads, which are essentially tubes like this cardboard piece, and to show you detail on the crimp beads for this piece, I will be using the cardboard as an example. I have seven of these. I'm going to have to wrap each of them with wire to make them into a charm so that they can hang from my necklace. I sorted them according to size in order to have a nice pattern in the middle where the longest one is in the middle. I will show you how to do that. So I have some 20 gauge silver wire. I'm going to cut about two inches of that off the spool. I'm going to put my bead through that wire. I'm going to pull it closer to one end than it is to the other. I'm going to pull both sides up. I'm going to crisscross both sides. The longer piece, I then want to put a bend in so that it's at a 90 degree angle of the other piece. So the longer piece is going straight up from the bead, from the top of the bead, 90 degree angle, and it's perpendicular to the other piece. And then I will hold that and I will begin to wrap the shorter end around the longer end. And you can keep that up using either your flat nose pliers or your chain nose pliers or a combination of both, you will be needing several different pliers for this project. So we'll just wrap that around until we get to the end. Okay, we push it all the way down so it's flush. Push it together so that's flush. Then we're going to use our round nose pliers. We're going to put a bend in, actually. So we'll just have a bend at the other end. We're going to leave a little space for wrapping it around. Put a bend. Use our round nose pliers. Wrap that around the bottom of our round nose pliers. And then hold it there. Get it nice and rounded and then perpendicular to itself. You can hold it and wrap that around until we get to that end. that push together like this and push that end down I do want them to be facing flat side out so I'm going to turn that opposite my bead I'm going to do that with all seven of those When we're ready to start stringing our wire, I will start using the nylon coated wire off the spool. We are going to also need a pair of snips to snip our wire at the end and a pair of crimping pliers and I will show you the more. There's two steps to these and I will show you in more detail using the cardboard tubes as I stated previously. And you may need a pair of scissors if your beads are on a string. So we're just going to begin by stringing our turquoise beads onto our 
nylon coated wire and we're going to string approximately half of the length, the desired length, because um, we're going to have the center piece, so maybe just under the desired length. length. So if you want a 14 inch chain, then you're going to want to do about 6 inches, because it's going to be about a 2 inch in the center. Um, if you want a larger chain, you know, take off 2 inches, so if you want an 18 inch chain, that would be nine inches on each side minus the two inches, so you do eight inches on each side. We're just gonna do that until we get to a good length. So I've strung about half of my turquoise beads. I've got about six and a half inches here, and I'm looking for about a 16 inch necklace. My centerpiece is gonna be about two inches, and I've got about an inch for the clasp, so six and a half is pretty good for me. So I'm ready now to begin stringing my center beads, and what I'm going to do is I've got them, I think I've got them in order here still. I've gotten all of their loops at the top done, so I'm just going to string them in that order. Do this one, and then I'm going to put a bead, a turquoise bead, and then the next one. And I did turn all of these loops where the flatter side would be facing out rather than the more pointed side. And to do that, you're going to go through. So when you go through, you're going to have that triangle. And you have that triangle, you want your loop facing out towards that more sharply pointed side and away from perpendicular to the flatter side. So you can just turn that. And then I'm just going to string my centerpiece with a bead in between, one a turquoise bead in between each one of my or elongated beads. And I'm just going to keep doing that until I use all, kind of keep from putting these longer beads in the center piece because I kind of want there to be a uniform shape to them. And I'm just going to do that until I get all seven my center beads on and then I'm going to do another six and a half inches of the turquoise on the other end and then I'm going to show you how to finish this off using a crimp bead. So here is that center of my new necklace. And you can use two beads between them or you can do it however you want. So I'm happy with that. And then I'm going to do another six and a half inches on this side and I'll show you how to finish this necklace off. So I've strung more beads on the other side and you can measure this two ways. I've got about six and a half inches on each side and I can do that with my measuring tape and hold the beads, you know, on either, hold the wire on either side of the beads and do that or you can measure it against itself. So put my finger right down to the very end. I want to find that center bead and pull it. Let's see. Everything looks like it's lining up there. So I think we're ready for a, to show you how to do the end. And I am using the crimp beads. I have two, one for each end, and I have a lobster clasp. I like to put the lobster clasp uh, hook part on the right side because most people are right-handed. And again, our Crimp beads that are in there are a tube like this. So I'm going to take the tube and I'm going to put it on my nylon coated wire. And then I'm going to take my tag, because this is going to be the left side, put it on the nylon coated wire, and then I want to put that end of my wire back through 
the tube of the current bead only, and I don't want to waste a whole lot of wire. So I don't want to have a whole lot of that sticking out. And that's going to create a loop in the wire to accommodate my tag. And what I'm looking for here is to have my wire like this string is. So I want to have it on each side of that. Now I'm going to take my crimp beads, so my crimp crimping pliers, and this is going to be in the second notch in there. I want to have, remember, I want to have one piece of wire on each side. And I'm going to crimp that down, and what that's going to do. So I have my tube, and I've crimped it. So it's going to make it kind of a butterfly, and I'm going to have a piece of wire through each side, so I'll have a loop like this. And then, I'm going to use the first indention in my crimp beads, and I'm going to turn that 90 degrees, and I'm going to crimp again. And what that's going to do is it's going to, so I had it like this, remember I had it like this where I have, I have my loop on one end of a loop coming out with I've got the indention here and then I'm just going to use that to pull it over so it's going to end up looking like this so it looks more like a bead and then if you can see it, I have just a tiny bit of excess there. I'm gonna pull on that first to make sure, I like to pull on it really good to make sure that that crimp is solid on there and it's not gonna come out. And then I can use my snips. And I can just snip that excess off flush with that crimp bead. And some people use crimp bead covers but if you're really good at crimping, then they kind of look like beads anyway, so you don't really even have to do that. Then I can push all of my beads because I'm working off my spool, so I actually haven't done this stuff on the other end either. I push all my beads down to that end because it's got its clasp on, and then I'm just gonna use my snips and go ahead and snip it off, leaving, I don't know, an inch or so to uh, work with on the other end. I'm going to put my crimp bead on again, and again, that's a tube, so I'm just putting that tube over the wire. And then I've got my clasp, so this is gonna be my right-hand side. This is gonna be my clasp side. Put that through, run the wire back through the crimp bead tube only. Pull it down to where it's only a small loop. So then I've got this, something that looks like this, where I've got a loop and the two wires. And then I am gonna use my first hole. So you got one, two, the closest one to the pivot point of the pliers to push that down. And then the second one to roll that over. So I end up with something like this with a wire out of either side. It looks kinda like a bead. So I'm gonna do that step again. And this might be the harder end for you because it is really close to the end and you kind of got to get it nice and tight there because so you don't want a lot of gap in your, your necklace. So this is the one closest to the pivot point or the joint. And then I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. Push that over. So I've got something like that with a piece of wire coming out of each of these sides. And then I've got my excess again. And I'll just use my snips. I'll snip that off and you can pull on that. Make sure it's not coming out. And here is our finished product. So we've got a nice, about a 16 inch necklace. A nice decorative touch there in the center. So thank you for watching and stay tuned for no more jewelry tutorials.